What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to today's video. So today we're going to be talking about upselling and cross-selling. I'm going to be explaining the differences between the two, the sort of numbers you can expect to return, and then finally showing you guys how to set it up in your own store. Now, before we get started, there's two things. Number one, the previous video did get over five likes, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. And so part two will be coming soon. It will either be tomorrow, if not Monday, depending on when I choose to record it. Uh, I've been getting a lot of requests for a course recently, so I've just started recording that too, but that's gonna be at least four to six weeks down the line. Um, so yeah, that to look forward to. And then number two, I've just started a Facebook group as well, completely free for everyone. And the idea is to kind of build a community for beginners or even experienced people, everyone can join, just a place for people to ask questions share resources and just network with like-minded people. So that's the first link in the description, check it out and hopefully see you guys on the inside. Now, that being said then, let's get into today's video. So upselling and cross-selling then, what is the difference? So they're both very similar and often confused as the same thing, but there is a difference. So upselling then is, in simple terms, it's when a customer comes onto your store, chooses the product they wanna buy, and then you offer them that same product, but in a higher quantity or more of it. So a good example would be if you're in the coffee niche and you're selling one kilo bags of coffee beans for 10 pound, you might offer them a two kilo bag for 15 pound. So they get double the quantity of coffee beans without paying double the price. It's just a, a very effective way of getting your customer to spend that little bit more with you. Cross selling then, similar. However, it's usually offering a different product. However, it's a product that's relatable and within the same niche. So going back to the coffee example, if someone's buying coffee beans, you might offer them a coffee mug or a coffee mug mat or something. Something that's in the same niche and has the same appeal to the customer. So in simple terms, that's the difference. So there are differences then guys between upselling and cross-selling. Any questions at all on that or in fact anything in this video, then leave a comment below, I will get back to you. Now, I believe cross-selling is gonna apply a lot more to you guys, so that's where the focus is gonna be on this video. However, if I'm wrong, make sure you let me know below and I can always do a video on upselling. Moving on then, how to pick a cross-sale product. So as I said earlier, it must be in the same niche. The idea here is to get the customer envisioning them themselves, imagining themselves using that product with the product they're buying. Just make it as relatable as possible. So going back to the coffee niche again, if someone's buying coffee beans, a mug would be a great upsell product because they could use their new coffee in their new mug. They go hand in hand. You can't use one without the other. So another example then, which is actually one I've used in my own store that I'm gonna be showing you guys in a minute, is an LED dog collar with an LED dog lead. Now, the reason it's worked so well is because they're completely relatable. They're both LED products and they're both gonna be used at the same time. If a dog's got a collar on, you need a lead to attach to it and vice versa. So the idea here is to make both the products completely relatable and if you can, try and get the customer to picture them using them both at the same time. Now, how much should it cost? So I've put here two to three times the cost of the hook product. If you don't know what a hook product is, then it's basically your original product. It's the product that you advertise and the product that gets your customer, gets your customer's interest and gets them to click on your ad. Now, from personal experimentation, I've found that two to three times the cost is usually the sweet spot. Obviously, the more expensive your cross-sell product is, then the less likely it is to convert, but it's going to take some experimentation on your half. Just choose a product, run it for a week, choose another product, run that for a week, and just compare the conversion rates and how much money they're both bringing in. Moving on, preferably from the same supplier. Now, there's two reasons I've, I've put that. It's not an absolute must. However, for these two reasons, this is why I believe it should be. Number one, the products will arrive together. This is always a good thing. It just avoids your customers getting confused and emailing them emailing you, sorry, saying, I've received this product, but not this product. And then number two, if they're from the same supplier, you're only gonna pay one carriage charge, which is gonna make your profit margin look a lot better. Why is cross-selling so effective then? Point one, people don't like to say no, usually. This kind of goes hand in hand with point two, actually, which is customer is already gonna spend money, the trust is there. 
whether people think about it or not, there's certain barriers in their mind that they have to overcome and satisfy themselves before they're going to spend money with you. And once they have overcome them barriers, then trying to sell them something on top or get them to spend that a little bit more is, is going to be easy. Um, quite an interesting subject, actually, a topic that I do a lot of reading on just because it pays dividends to understand your customer and the psychological barriers. The, just the things that you have to satisfy in your customer's mind, whether they're consciously thinking about them or not, everyone has them. And if you can learn how the brain works and how the mind works and the psychological thoughts behind buying something, then the more effective you can be. Um, point three then, huge ROIs. I'm gonna show you guys some of the results that my upsell products have got. Um, the app we use, I think I'm paying £90 a month for the app I use, but you'll see in a minute just the potential return on your money that you'll get. So uh, this is the back end of my store, and the, pro the app that we're going to be using is Product Upsell. So as you can see, here are some of the offers that I've got running. Um, now, I've shown them all. I could have deleted these to show you they're not working, but... Regardless of how good some people are, they're going to do things that aren't going to work. Um, I've spoken about in my early videos the whole dog collar thing. And as you can see, the, the sort of money that it brings in just by... This is simply a pop-up that asks someone a question can bring in nearly an extra £5,000 worth of revenue. So you can see the effectiveness and just the value. If you're not doing this, if you haven't implemented this on your store, then you are losing money. And... When you do start doing this, I guarantee it, you will start seeing more money. Your average order value will go up. So how do you create a cross-sell offer then? So once you've installed the app, the app is called Product Upsell. What we're going to do is head over to Offers and Create Offer. This is going to take you to the screen where you do absolutely everything you need to to create your offer. It's very simple. We'll run through it one by one and then we'll head over to my site and I'll show you the example we've just done. Once you click save and create your offer, then it goes live immediately. So we start at the top then, name your offer. This isn't visible to your customers, so you can name it whatever you like. I usually like to call it um, like products to products or what the products are, just so when you'll see in a minute, the, the offers are listed one by one. And if you name it, for example, LED color to LED lead, then you can just see straight away what that offer is. So. For this example, we're going to be doing a backpack to bracelet. Um, I know they're not relatable, but I don't want to choose one that already has an upsell or a cross sell on just so it doesn't conflict with the with the numbers. Um, so that's our name. We're picking a cross sell. Now, show the offer when the customer either presses the add to cart button or presses the checkout button. Feel free to experiment here, but from my experiences, I get the best results from the checkout button and purely because when a customer hits that checkout button, they're in a different state of mind than when they hit the add to cart button. Anyone can click the add to cart button too, but when they're clicking on that checkout button, then as I said before, those psychological barriers are broken down and they're prepared and ready to spend money. So they're more likely to say yes to your cross sell. Moving on then, trigger product. Your trigger product is going to be the product that's in the cart that is going to trigger the cross sell. So we want that to be our backpack. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Let's try backpack. Yep. I don't think there's a cross sell on this product. That's why I'm choosing it. Make sure you click save trigger. Select product. And we're just going to choose a random bracelet that I've got selling. So we'll choose we'll choose this this skull one. Continue selected, and that. Moving on, then we've got date range. Personally, I never use this when I'm creating offers. I'm checking them every day, if not every other day. Certainly every seven days because that's how long I'll usually run a product before changing it if I'm testing products. Um, so completely up to you guys. However, I don't use that personally. Cart price. Now this is for if your profit margins are very tight and you want the customer to be spending a certain amount of money before they get shown the cross sell. 
buffer. So if we were to click on set cart requirements, we could set that to £25. So their cart price would have to be over £25 for them to get this cross sell offer. However, I never use this again, so I'm going to use that and leave that blank. Now, offer window settings. This is what your customer sees when the offer pops up. So it's important you get this right. Offer title. I always put a question in here. Just try and get your customer's attention. Getting them to read a question will get them thinking. So I usually go along the lines of, would you like this? They read that and think, would I like what? And then it just gets their attention even more. And then offer description. This way you want to create urgency and that fear of missing out. So something along the lines of, one time offer when you purchase a backpack so again it's creating that urgency that they don't want to miss out and it's only a one-time offer they don't want to miss out so moving on again advanced settings allow the customer to select more than one and offer the offered products so when we go back to if I show you go back to choosing your cross sale product you can actually choose more than one product um, so that's what that checkbox is for Allow the customer to select multiple quantities of an offer product. So do you want the customer to, to only be allowed to buy one or can they buy as many as they like? I usually put this, I usually set a limit of this to three just because it's it's like a, a subliminal way of telling your customer that, hey, here's a good offer, but we're not letting you take advantage of it too much. So it's not all about money. It just creates that impression to our customer that we're not trying to squeeze them for as much money as possible but they can purchase up to three if they want. Next one then, open product page if image or text is clicked. I never check this box just because I want the customer to be placing and completing their order as soon as possible because we live in a world today where there's more distractions than ever. People are on their phones or doing other things and the more time someone spends placing an order the more chance they have of being distracted and leaving your site so I just don't leave that ticked and that way they're forced not forced but there's just less things to take them away from the process of placing an order next one then hide products that are out of stock this hopefully won't happen to you if you're drop shipping but it's better safe and sorry just to click it that way you don't end up selling a product that isn't in stock Last one then, remove offered products from the cart if it's triggering conditions are no longer met. So what this means is, for this example, we are using a backpack as the trigger and then a bracelet as the cross sale. So if you don't want someone to get away with buying one without the other, then you would check this. So it stops people from saying yes to get the cross sale offer, then going back to their cart, removing the backpack and then just buying the bracelet so if you're offering if your cross sale is offered at a highly discounted price that you can't afford to sell at unless they're buying that trigger product then you want to leave this ticked and that's it so we click save offer and that's all on there now so backpack to bracelet now if we head over to my site it usually starts working immediately so we'll scroll down and find the backpack, add to cart, and now moment of truth then, and there we go. That's our pop-up and that's our cross-sell. So that's it guys, that really is as simple as it is. The only thing I can say now is just don't delay on this, just get started today because I can almost guarantee it, the first day you implement upsells and cross-sales, you will start making more money. That being said then, that is it for today's video. Um, as I said at the beginning, part two of the 0-200k series will be coming tomorrow, if not Monday. Um, make sure you hit subscribe if you already haven't, and don't forget to join the Facebook group. See you in the next video.